Bro, I don't, listen, I don't know how to do this. Uh, you did it guy, really well last no, time. No, no, I wasn't me, I man. Like this guy with oh, the moustache, I'm not very fond of him. Turn him, turn his face to him. <laughs> so the as well. Yeah, bro, the his moustache is too good for my liking. <laughs> 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 I wish I had that moustache. <laughs> listen, what are you guys doing in terms of uh, property market? UK is going crazy. You bought your place, right? Yeah, Luton. yeah, but I had to look very far. Uh, yeah, you know, what you got to do up, these days, though, isn't it? Up in Croydon. Yeah. Bro, we need to get onto this thing. I went the other day actually to a property viewing. It's a funny story. Uh, I'm not going to say what area it is, but I don't know how to say this. I didn't feel comfortable when I was walking down the high road. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's a very bizarre thing when you live your whole life in central London. You have this kind of thing where you know you see everyone of all walks of life. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm walking there with my wife and my son, and uh, I can't see anyone who's wearing a hijab. Uh, I can't see anyone who's got dark features. I can't see anyone wearing a beard. Five uh, minutes later, I know. Yeah, you know I, I still can't see if you. I, yeah, I'm looking. You know, I'm looking really hard. I'm like, whoa, this is what Britain must have looked like back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, um, needless to say, I'd made up my mind before I even saw the property that I'm not going to live in this area because <laughs> it just didn't feel comfortable. I turned to my wife, you know, in Arabic, and I told her, oh, I don't think uh, these lovely people are. Used to seeing someone dressed the way you are, and she just chuckled, and we ended up going home, which means I'm still looking for a place to buy. I don't agree with you on that point, to be honest. What point? I mean, you just kind of cancelled the whole idea of moving to the area because you didn't see anyone wearing a hijab or anyone. Bro, with we a live in a very, very bizarre time, to be honest with you. I know, I know. And everything I mean, that you're hearing about the acid attacks, the women getting their hijab pulled off, but it doesn't, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't have to mean that they're all bad. Yeah, but you could no, have been no, no, no. you could have been the first one to start exactly. something off there. No, bro, exactly. brother, time there's always somebody. Firstly, I'm not generalizing and saying anyone's bad. But at the end of the day, for example, why do most of the Iraqis we know live in Wembley? Because it's like there's they a community. Exactly. There's a community. It's there's there's people together, and they're com comfortable. You have your Arab shop. You have the halal meat shop. That's you've it. Got, do you know that's what I mean? That's it. That's it. I you've mean, the, the first thing you said by... was comfortability, and you you and your wife did not feel comfortable, and then that's no. it. Well, let me give you an example. Okay, okay. so when we first moved to Holland. I'm talking about back 1989, my dad moved to Holland. And I was, I was too young then to remember a lot of stuff, but I know we were walking in the shops, there was no hijabis whatsoever. People would look at stare at my mum, like literally when I say stare, like in, in her face, like what's she doing, what's she wearing? You moved to Holland, Now you were forced to, right? We were forced to, but let me tell okay. you, let me tell you something. So the reason why they were looking at her, because they'd never seen it before, they didn't really understand it. They thought that's weird. What is she doing? What is she wearing? Our neighbours had the same thing as well, same impression as well. They were like, these people just moved in, random people. You know, we've seen Turks, Turkish or Moroccans, they wear a bit different, but she's wearing completely different. So they, they never really spoke to us, they never really approached us. One day my dad's like, let's invite them over. Invite them over. And I remember my mom made like chicken with zirishk and kishmish oh, yeah. and everything, the full load. And they came in, they were like astonished, like, wow, they eat like us. You know, they, they <laughs> sit at a table like us. They, they eat, you eat humans. I don't know, man. They eat babies. Because they were like <laughs> looking at us before very differently. And I was like, I remember they were sitting there and they were eating. They were talking to us and it changed completely. Their children would come over, play with us. They would knock on our door, give us gifts, give us know, stuff, so. bring food. So I'm not saying... But before that, they, they, they didn't have a preconceived notion. My problem is in the, in the modern age, number one, as you were saying, you, you were kind of forced to move there. Right now, I'm, I'm not obligated to move anywhere that I don't feel comfortable. Number two, you can tell sometimes when you walk in a specific area that are not used to seeing a woman in hijab. It's the 21st century. They've seen the news. They know what's going on in the world. So they have a notion of what a Muslim is, unfortunately. They have a misconception and, about Muslims. Yeah, and it's, and it's, and it's derogatory most of the time. Yeah. So I, why would I want to put myself in that kind of position where something could potentially... Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can tell when the way that somebody looks at you, they've already, they've already measured you up in their mind. They're like, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know this person. How do you know this person? Because I've seen someone on the news blow themselves up, look just like this kid. Do you know what I'm saying? But how would you change that misconception they have? How would you change that picture? Bro, right now, the best way to change that picture is through actions, through, actions, through you know, being a good person, stuff like that. But not doing that at the expense of you know, the uh, comfortability of your family. So what, you change your appearance? No, it's not about changing appearance. How do we, how do, how do we make appearance it? Appearance is, is part of 
what identifies you anyway. So as the Sayyid said, he said, um, people have already sort of identified you, especially for our Muslim sisters. Yani my sister, my mom, they have already associated that hijab with something negative. And as we know in job interviews, when you go for a job interview, the first thing they do within the first five minutes is make the impression of the interview. Whether they want you or not. Yeah, exactly. And part of it, the people who are preparing you for the interview, they say like a recruitment agency, or even if you search it up, and they say focus on your presentation from your shoes to your tie to your beard to your yeah, hair yeah. and if you're a lady you need to dress in a certain way as well so presentation is key um, and in terms of how we are associated with negative um, images or negative impressions um, it's our responsibility to change that but this begs the question um, where do I start from mm. do I start from um, my outer appearance, do I just pump weights and go to the gym and wear tight tops and just feel You like definitely should <laughs> stop wearing tight tops. <laughs> I think we should start by Ali Hassan pouring us tea. Yeah, that's, that's where I think we should sure. start. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> just don't get the moustache guy Let in my me. face. <laughs> <laughs> Said, you make, you, make, you make very good points. Um, from what I've learned and what I know is change always starts within. See, a lot of people, they do this kind of quick fix solution. You know, when you wake up and you feel really motivated on a Saturday morning, you're like, you know what, I'm going to change my life. You make the gym membership, you go get a haircut, you go do this, three days later, it's over. <laughs> you know what I mean? To really change, you have to change your mentality, the way you think. You change yourself within, you change your core. And that would make a natural, it's kind of organic growth in everything else in your life. So when you change your core, the way you think everything's inside you, suddenly, without realizing it, you get good traits. But do I neglect my outer appearance? No, 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 no. You don't neglect. Because you're just You saying. definitely don't neglect your outer appearance. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you very much. much. No, <laughs> I mean, identity is way more than just your. It's, it's who you are, it's where you've come from, it's your color, your creed, it's your background, it's your religion. Yeah. I, I, for me, anyway, that's how I define yeah. identity. Because if you look at your ID card, it talks about everything about you your gender, your hair color, your eye color, oh. depending on whatever country you're in. And yeah, when you're born, etc. So it's more than just outer appearance and it's internal as well. And I think if you have the base, the foundation in its correct sort of way, which is the internal bits and pieces, automatically that forms your exterior um, personality Fair and right. um, yeah. your presentation. I mean, it's, it's how you feel. So, on how, so how, how do you identify yourself? How do I identify? Well, obviously I'm a Muslim. And this can be spotted miles away. Uh, somebody who has a little bit of, you know, um, awareness. Um, they won't be, let's say, able to quickly pick out what region I'm from or my, my country of origin or my parents' country. But they can spot that, okay, you know, he's got that beard, he's got the facial hair, you know, um, stuff like that. And those are the key identifiers. So you identify yourself as Muslim? Yes. That's it. Um, religiously, yes. From a religious standpoint, I think we have to look at it from category to category. Oh, so you differentiate them? No, uh, like I said, identity is not just one particular element. If I'm, if I, I don't know if I'm explaining correctly, but obviously it's it's a, it's category per category. So there's a, I guess, a legal um, identification. There's a, a political identification. What political party you follow? Um, perhaps um, religion, and then well, it's ethnic. You define religion. yourself, but you define yourself. So when you think about yourself, how do you identify yourself? I don't know, I was going to be grilled, but... Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, uh, like this is an open question. No, no, I'm joking, bro, I don't mind, I'm kidding. Would you say you're British, British Muslim British, or... Yeah, I just or or Muslim British. grab a cookie, but you keep asking me questions, Stay but... Um, bro, you don't need any more no, cookies. No, I, I did want one. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, so, you're saying, I can't dip. I need, to, I, I'm a dipper, sorry. Yeah. Um, obviously, look, I... This is quite a nice restaurant, by the way, that it is quite we nice. come to on a weekly basis. It is basis. quite nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we've chosen, because it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, look, Muslim, because that's how I kind of... I use I practice that day in and day out. And what I mean by that is I pray, you know? It's kind of like embedded in me, and I've become used to it. So that's the first thing I would say. And then secondly, um, it's 
apart from the English I speak with, obviously my, my family and my friends, but two very important components of my family is my parents, and I speak to them quite often, and I don't speak to them in English, so I speak to them in Urdu. And so therefore, I'm, I guess, Pakistani as well, now that you are, I'm opening up, and I'm open showing you us, my bro. resume. Bro, open up to <laughs> us. So, but what I'm trying to say is it's a step-by-step -step process. It's, a, it's, a, it's categorizing your identity and breaking it down. It depends on whoever's asking the question and what context this person's asking. See, I, I don't see a problem in anything you said. Thank and you. I, I don't see a problem right in um, whether I say I'm Muslim first or I'm British first. Um, some people may see that this is, a, this is a problem if someone said I'm British first rather than Muslim. The way I see it, if you want to look at this Islamically, and I may be wrong, by the way, because, you know, I've only got a humble amount of knowledge. And you're usually wrong, so... <laughs> <laughs> and that. <laughs> um, what differentiates us, even in the Qur'an, it says, At-Taqwa. Mm. Yeah. Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 13. I think we keep going back and circling no, back to this ayah. You keep going ayah. back to it. Because I think like, that's the only ayah like I know. two ayahs right? he knows and like one hadith by Imam <laughs> Sadiq. And he just recycles them. So I love Allah, it. This is how you know that this one ayah can be applied to that's many it, things in our life. That's how I know you've read this one page of the Quran. This is the greatness of the Quran. <laughs> Did I back myself up? <laughs> uh, no, go on. You're making a good point though. Um, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكْرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَامَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ فَتَقْوَى is really important and I think that's what differentiates us in general. But shouldn't that be the thing in that general, defines I'm us generically. that we should always identify ourselves with? I think what you've spoken about, you touched on a really, really good point, which is that... Um, wow, okay. my, that's a first. <laughs> which is, in other words, you said my intrinsic self reflects on it, it just it just involuntarily reflects who i am yeah. sorry my outer appearance is reflected based on what's my uh, inner appearance like so imam sadiq says um, that's the other hadith i only know religion is treatment okay. so i think the way i should be identified as a person, this is how I would, I would like to be identified, which is very difficult to do, which is someone who's truthful. I think Ali has a problem with that. <laughs> uh, in terms of truthful, I don't have a problem with that. No, <laughs> no my truthfulness. No, yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're a good guy. Oh, good. I yeah. thought you were going to drop one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting um, for something a bit no, no, bigger. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it so my, it's, what I'm saying is my, the way I am as a person should be the way I should be identified. And that should always lead to someone saying, that's a good Muslim. What about the picture that people have of Muslim? Like the media is portraying us differently. Um, at, at school, let's say there's some clashes as well. Yes. You know, in school you get, you get taught about Darwin and, 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 and about the evolution and then you're coming from yeah, a Muslim background. There are going to be clashes. I mean, do you, have to, do you have to explain yourself the whole time, even at school, in the media, at work? Listen, this is not how I am, I'm different. Uh, our Muslim background is different. We believe differently. Subhanallah. The uh, only way, sorry, Sayyid, yeah. the only way that our religion got spread is through speech and it's through writing and it's through media. So I don't see a problem in us explaining ourselves. But I feel like it's our responsibility just, just to, be to, clear, to do so. Just yes. to be clear with something, you know, uh, Darwin's theory is a theory. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, I feel like a lot of people uh, have an idea of the f theory, but they it's, it's kind of like they don't really understand it a lot because of a lot of what he says, I don't think it has any problems with what we believe in. No, but Akis, I feel like, um, if we, just to touch on that point, our religion and science are in line. Yeah, they are, yeah. I, I, it's just opposite. Well, as soon as someone thinks. says Darwin, they think we were monkeys. No, no, but humans. see, there's forget, forget that. that. What I'm trying to what I'm trying, trying to say is, no, no. What I want to get to is like, for instance, back in the days when I was young, ages ago. You're still young, bro. You're oh, no, only no. about eighteen. No, no, no. no. Twenty. Sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> he's old, man. He's old. I just turned just just turned sixteen. Well, he's doing a good job. I don't know what he's doing. He's accepting. He's some face creams. They would teach us like explicitly there's no such thing as God at school, really? like literally in Holland. Holland. Oh, wow. 
Like literally, wow. there is no God. That's like, you know, in, in history, there were teachers. There are religions like Christianity, there is Islam, there is Judaism, Judaism but there is no God. And you're not allowed, I mean, even, even to, in the test or in the exams that you would get to say, like, I don't believe there is, I believe there is God. I don't believe in evolution or if humans did not evolve from monkeys or whatever. So I'm saying there is going to be a clash there, right? There's going to be a clash. I mean, I, I've, I've got to lie to them. I've got to make up things to them just to kind of not... Taqiyah. You, know, you can call it taqiyah, but to kind of to, 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 to succeed as... Did you guys have that problem? Because I went to a C of E school. So. I went to a Catholic school and okay. it was beautiful. Yeah. I actually I went, went to church, church with them. I went to church with them. You went to a, a Church of England school, which there you was are. great. It was, it was beautiful. I loved it. I literally loved it because the amount of respect I was shown yeah. and the amount of knowledge that I grasped on, you know, hand, you know, first hand experience, first hand knowledge about what they're like, what their traditions are like, going to church in Christmas. It was, it was nice. I think this is one of the things, well. yeah, seeing the similarities and differences. To be honest with you, I feel like that experience of five years within my secondary school embedded my belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in my faith a lot uh, a lot more than it would have if I maybe went to a normal uh, is, Islamic school. Maybe, I'm just saying you maybe, know what it but it's one of the factors that it did. Do you know what it did for me? It helped me, now when I look back at it, we're talking about Ali Hassan and the whole thing of ide identification, it helped me realize, look, I'm in a school that's very diverse and we had a lot of you know, ethnically British, as in English students, uh, a lot of them were religious and did go to church. A lot of them did not. A lot of people, for example, went to mosque. A lot of them did not. I realized that being British doesn't have a problem with being religious at the same time. So I can be a, Brit uh, a, a Muslim British or a British Muslim, however you want. And it helped me with my identity. As in now, I, I don't see what the problem with being British and Muslim is. If you want to ask me what my identity is, it's just that. With yeah. Iraqi heritage, of course, I never forget my heritage because I absolutely love it. But, you know, there it is. Uh, you can become a Muslim and you can also abide by the law of this land and be British. As in, you know what? As we are encouraged I to like do. fish and chips. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is, problem is, he was alluding to the fact of... Uh, the outer appearance identity. Being Muslim isn't really long beard, uh, you know, uh, short, I don't know what they call it, dish dash, dish dash. yeah. And you know, the Reebok classics with the football socks that <laughs> you see on Four Lions. Have you guys seen that film? I mean, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, not, yeah. that's not... that's bit, not bits of it, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's they that's, wear shin pads with it as well. The shit, the <laughs> unfortunately <socks>. not, bro. <laughs> um, no, I do find what the brother just said about Holland and the school system a bit shocking. I mean, they made you write it down. Yeah. Whoa, man. I mean, I concur with um, Brother Ali here. Um, basically, like in, in high school, when I was in high school and middle school, I remember that it was very much God orientated, like you were free. You grew up in America, right? Yeah, in America. So, California. Um, That's where the accent comes from. That <laughs> gives it away, doesn't it? Um, so, we had to, at every morning, every morning, as class would begin, your first period class, um, we would do what is called the, the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States. So we would be like, I pledge allegiance to the United States, uh, the flag of the United States of America. It's been a long time, guys, I don't remember. But I do remember there was this one little, um, not a verse, I'm used to saying verse, but it's not a verse, but you know, line where it says, under one, uh, in one nation, under God. Yeah. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I remembered it. So, um, yeah, you, you, once you get going, you know. Um, yeah, so like you had that freedom and it wasn't like, hey, you have to be an atheist and you know, we'll teach you this only. And no, but America is, is a very uh, God-weary country. I mean, the, the, the uh, what's it called? The president <laughs> yeah. has to... I, I don't know if you'll be think... sarcastic here. On the Bible. No, 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 it's no, 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 no. a God-wearing country. God-fearing country, is that what you said? No, no, as in they're, they're aware of God's presence. God-aware. They, 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 they're aware very, what's it called? Uh, just, it's, it's just it's coined more, a word, I think. More, more so than Great Britain, especially in this last 15-20 okay. years. If you look at American culture and stuff, it's a good point. God is a big part of it. Yeah, because when a, when a president is sworn in, and I think yeah. that's what you're referring yeah, to, you have, he has puts a hand on the Bible, Bible, and then obviously, you know, 
does whatever. So the dollar, the dollar. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It says in God it, we trust. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, I don't know which so, God they're referring to, though, but it definitely says. The one dollar bill. Yeah. You know, I don't know, but I don't know what God, whoever wrote that, is referring to because yeah. it doesn't specify because there's also other stuff on that dollar bill which kind of goes against it. But anyway, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> that's, that's a different story for a uh, different day. <laughs> this, uh, you know, funny talk about secret societies. But what I'm trying to say is. I didn't say anything. <laughs> it's, it's something to. To know that I've, I've realized from a lot of friends who live in the States that, um, for example, people take going to church on Sunday a lot more serious than they do here in Great Britain. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can so, see that. This, this whole conversation that we just had, honestly, is just making me think, how do I identify myself as a Muslim? So what how is, do you? What is the Muslim identity? To be honest with you, I don't... I don't find it a problem in blending in the society, you know, dressing how I feel comfortable um, in line with how my principles, what my principles are and how I'd like to carry myself. That's one thing. And of course, dressing how the society is dressing is another thing because then I'll be going with their wave rather than mine. Um, so I think my... And that's fashion trends though, what you're talking about. Sorry? Like just going in line with the latest fashion trends. No, there's, there's, there's no problem in keeping up with, uh, with fashion trends as long as they are in line with my principles. That's what I'm saying. So I think what I'm saying is that my base is my principles rather than the society and what they think is right. That's the first thing. So my outer appearance, I think, as a Muslim is extremely important. Um, but what's more important is my inner self and how I treat people. If we go back to the Quran and our hadith, we are strongly recommended to uh, treat people how we would like to be treated. And we would always have to be uh, the ambassadors of our religion as well as our sect um, in any place where we are in. We have to be identified with that, with the positives and um, rather than any sort of negative impressions anyone may have I think the best us. way to be identified is through what you're saying is is through actions so what I mean by that is we have to be identified as Muslims but for us to be identified as Muslims it's not about what we're wearing Do you know what I mean yeah it's about I sit into a room with someone because this is something that that's good, uh, that's good. ulama told me uh, and it's very interesting they said that at one point in history in 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 in, in, in history um, the Shia Ethna Asharis in the wider community, for example, people would trust them with their values, with their amanat, with their money. People would trust them with their families. People would trust them with a lot of things because there are certain char characteristics, I beg your pardon, that they have. So for us as, as Muslims, somebody should be able to sit in a room with Ali and straight away know he's a Muslim, not because of his features, but because he's so well-spoken, he's so polite, He's got beautiful manners, he smells good, he dresses good, because you know in the Bafa community... And he's also mind, successful. He, exactly, yes, he's successful. I think that's very important. I, 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 I've actually read that they say that, specifically the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam throughout history have always been mumayyazin. Uh, translated to English, that's uh, they've always been distinguished mm. because they're always the best in their respective fields. That actually tells us that, you know, that gives me motivation to think that we need to push ourselves yeah. the absolute yeah. limit. Yeah. And when we reach that success, when we reach, you know, those high achievements, that's what should be identified as Islam. Yes. Not these jokers that you see on TV. When someone says Muslim, they should, they, they should straight away think truthful, well spoken, looks good, trustworthy. trustworthy, blah, 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 this and that. You know what I'm saying? All the really good Those traits. are the things yeah. that should... Yeah, I can't agree more. That that's really good. Good. Yeah. I think, it's just I think it needs another round of tea. Yeah, would you like some yeah. more? <laughs> I actually think, to be honest with you, it's, it's very simple for us to kind of identify ourselves as Muslims if we kind of follow exactly, like, for instance, as an example of what Imam Zina Abidin says in Rasat al Hukuk. Yes, please. If you look at, for instance, the, the right of, of your neighbor, the right of your fellow human, the right of your, your organ, the right of everything, he's talked yeah. about every single right. That you, that you have to follow, or rulings that you have to follow, to live an, a, a peaceful life, and also to come across as a as a normal, decent human being. I mean, it, it tells us to you know Sorry, to. I'll bro. take a cookie. 
Yeah. No, I'm all right. Thank you so much. Because, like, I'm the only one. Go on, eat away. I already, like, no, eat away. nobody else is having any. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll cut you off. Know. It tells us how to treat your neighbor, right? I mean, mm. yes. in, in my opinion, if you, if you move into a new area, and if you, if you don't respect your neighbor, if you don't go out and you, you look after, you know, make any noise, you, you apologize if you do make noise, things like that. Islam teaches us how to behave in a, in a decent way. If you just follow them, without even telling them you're a Muslim, they will come to you. They, they, will, they will respect you even more. And they will, once they find out you are a Muslim, they go like, wow, so this is what Islam is really about. This is how Muslims and are. That's the best. That's the best way of propagating Islam as well. Yes, as Hadi says yes, all the time yes. with that one rawaya that he knows, is without speaking. <laughs> he has two. Yeah. Oh, today he's got two. Yeah, today is, that was a new one. Uh, without speaking, let people know that you're a Muslim. That's it. Beautiful. Beautiful. The, just the way he says it, I really like it. I but mean, because I can't speak it, you know, especially going back to in, yeah, that's his I indirect really way of saying it. translate it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> going back to the main what point. Did you say? <laughs> going back to the main point. You live in Croydon, you live in Luton. Hadi, where are we going to go? We're going to go down south to look for a place or we're going to go up north? Because to be honest, Come I need to, to Luton, man, you'll fit in there. Oh yeah? Is everyone well spoken and polite and clean? You, that? you yeah. won't have to worry about the hijab situation, but you might feel uncomfortable in a different way. I wanna <laughs> I wanna just apply everything we've just discussed to an incident or something that I wish I had. I wish I had this conversation when I was a lot younger. Mm. You wouldn't have appreciated it. Especially those days. especially especially or someone having this conversation at the level you at, were when you were younger. Yes, because when I grew up, you said something so beautiful, say, because I actually witnessed growing up in a school, Catholic school, a Muslim. I see Muslims. I see. A, I saw a lot of Muslims. Um, but then the funny thing is, the role models I had in, in front of me, when I say role models, I mean I'm in year seven. My role model was the guy in year 10 or year 11, right? Um, you know, I respect him. Everyone respects him. He's meant to be Muslim. He's meant to be maybe from my country, but then... The way he carries himself is negative. The way he acts as a person contradicts what I'm meant to be as a Muslim. So what I'm saying is our youth, I mean myself, I wish I had the maturity a lot earlier in my life because I would have not fell into the trap of seeing this person and asso associating this person with um, being, a role model. being a role model for myself. So this goes back to the, all the points that you guys made and Nahal, we need to make sure that our ground is solid before we actually mm. um, go into anything in life. Yeah, and uh, you just brought up another point, the responsibility of being a role model. But that's a bit of a deep topic and I'm not bothered to get into that. And I think the biscuits think are you calling you. Listen, you never told me about last week, did you end up going to the party? Um, no, of course I didn't. Course I bet you went to it. I bet you did. Well, I'm telling you that I didn't. And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs>